God is so good to us. Yes, much better than I deserve, I can tell you that. Yes. Go ahead, let her in. That little baby that me and Jeannie took when she was six days old, she was from yeah. the hospital. Uh -huh. She was about that long. Uh -huh. I took had the privilege of taking her back last, only a week ago. And uh, she's three years old, and they took her braces off of her, and the doctor wow. put her in regular shoes. Second, we got a friend of ours who was praying for and had breast cancer. She had all her treatments, and I talked to her husband uh, yesterday, and she got a clean bill of health last Tuesday, cancer free. That's so awesome. Awesome. God, good. That's right. I love to hear things like that. I love to hear things like that. Yes. You know, I, I've had people tell me, say, how can you be so upbeat? You know, when, 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 uh, I hear you so up about cancer and other things when your daughter died. And I said, I just tell her, look, God had a plan for my daughter and she fulfilled her plan. And then she done more in her sickness than she did in her life. And so, and my daughter was satisfied with that. That's right, great testimony. She was satisfied with it. And if she's satisfied with it, I'm satisfied with it. So sometimes God heals you all the way and you walk off clean bill of health. Sometimes he heals you by taking you home. But eventually, we're all going to get be taken home. Amen? Amen. No, no, no. She's, she's, she's resting. Oh, resting. Her labor days are over. Praise God. Of course, we're all going to have jobs when we get to heaven. Y'all know that, don't you? We're not going to sit in a cloud and swing our feet and play a harp. We're going to have, we're going to have jobs. Amen. And depending on what you did down here with what God gave you, depends on what you're going to be doing up there. Amen. I, I'm sad if you're going to street sweeper on the streets to go as long as I can, as long as I can be up there. But, but some, of, some of us, we got to remember that God's going to judge us by we, how we handle what he gave us down here. You uh, we'll have a dog up there? There's going to be dogs up there. <laughs> yep. Uh, all dogs go to heaven. That movie was a true story. All dogs go to heaven. Of course, I think all cats come from hell, but all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I was going to say, I'm going to get it. I just think it's my route up this morning. Everything's fine. God gave us all our pets to, to comfort us and to, well, not all our pets to comfort us. I never had a turtle comfort me. No lizard never comfort me. Well, my labs, my labs and my dogs and the cats and all they do, they have comfort me. All right. Get your, well, we get your Bible. I'm going to read this before we have communion. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine his neighbor. No. But let a man examine his spouse. Let a man examine his children. No. Yeah. Let a man examine himself. himself. And so that eat of that bread and drink of that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. But it's caused many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. I'm asking you right now to put your hands <clears throat> this way. I want you to ask God just to touch. Touch you, touch the people around you. But if there's any actions or attitudes in you this week that God did not approve of, give it to him. Some of you actually know and some of you may not know. Remember there's a sin of omission and the sin of commission. The sin of commission is when you actually did it. Sin of omission is when you were supposed to do it and didn't, and sometimes it's just hid from you, period. So you just ask God to touch it all. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, you see us here. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us and what you're about to do for us. We thank you, God, for all the things that you say and do in our lives. We thank you, God, that you work in our lives in a very powerful, powerful way. I ask you right now, Lord, if there's actions or attitudes, sins of omission, sins of commission, Lord, in hidden sins from us, I ask you, Lord, to reveal it to us right now, Lord. Will you just take it and just take care of it? Because once it's under the blood, it's gone. It's over. I thank you, Lord, for healthy guilt. 
because that, that healthy guilt is, is the spirit convicting. And I rebuke the unhealthy guilt, which is condemnation, which comes from the devil. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister in a way only you can. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, 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 Brother Wayne. The Bible said on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. On the same night he took the cup and he said, This is my blood shed for you. He blessed it and said, Drink it in remembrance of me. Come, let us join at the Lord's table.
Psalm 150. God is so good. It's better, to, it's better to me than I am to him. How about it? Amen. I sit back sometimes and wonder, sometimes I'll say, God, why do you keep putting up with me? It's just amazing how he just, his love never fails. Amen. So, Psalm 150. Y'all say this with me. Here's what you do. Here's what I want you to do. Every time you see praise ye the Lord, I want y'all to say it. Okay? Ready? Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him. Yeah, just say, you'll never see praise Him. I'm sorry. Whenever you see praise Him, y'all say praise Him. Just try it again. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery of heart. Praise Him for the table of dance. Praise Him with the string and the swiss and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. That everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Isn't God going to give a little hand up of praise? Yeah, go ahead. It's okay. You can be seated. I'm only going to go over a little bit of the day. Finish up next week. God's so good. You know, praise is a, is a verb and a noun. All right? Of course, we have the adjective too. We're not going to try to get into all the different things because, you know, they were asking me the other day when I was getting to graduate, what foreign language did you take? And my wife looked at me and said, Tell me you took English. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I'm not sure you passed it. Amen. So, praise is action. And praise is the lifestyle. The action is the verb when we praise God with our mouth. But moreover, God wants us to praise Him with our lifestyle. We need to let everybody know when they see us that we've got something that they need. Everybody's ever living up. When I was in the world, what won me to God was not somebody that beat me over the head with the Bible. What won me to God was somebody who lived in and loved God and praised Him and lived the lifestyle of praise. That's the one that drew me in to uh, wanting to have what he had. I got hungry. It was like salt on a salt lick with a cow. I had to have it. We have so much to praise God for. That there's great power in giving honor to him. And the Bible gives us so many examples of when they couldn't do anything else, they praised God. And God did something for them. Somebody here right now, you may have things that you can't do a thing about. If you learn to praise God in the middle of it, something good will come out of it. I have heard just recently, whenever I go to the hospital, I hear this, and when I go to people that were treating Bethany, they always said the thing that really stuck out to them was no matter how sick she was, even if she couldn't even lift up her head, she always had a smile on her face, and she was always praising God. Always. And they said that just stuck out to them, and they can't, and they can't get it out of their mind of, of the testimony that she had. Well, the reality is, Way too often, we forget to praise Him. Amen? I do too. We, we get going along and, and we get into struggles and, and sometimes the constant demands on life uh, and it crowds us out and we forget to praise God. I was even writing a paper, like I told you, I wanted to graduate in December, so I doubled up my class load and, I'm, and every time I get down working on my classes, I was working on a class last night until 1 o'clock in the morning and I looked at my wife and I said, I have got to be an idiot. And she said, but you're being educated, idiot. <laughs> All right. And so, so uh, I was filling out paper, and, and, and as I'm working on these papers and doing all this stuff, I, 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 if I'm not careful, I will forget to praise God. At the, at the prison, if we're not careful, you know, uh, I walked in, front, uh, they keep messing up the, the changing guards. They change guards, not messing up, they change guards. The new guards come in, they see a procedure, they're not sure. <clears throat> Sometimes how to make this procedure work. And on Thursday night, uh, when we went on Thursday night, Brandon was with me. Everywhere we went, they were open doors for us. I mean, they had to even point. They were open doors everywhere. It was like being Maxwell Smart walking out. Da, 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 da. And the doors open. They're everywhere. They told me, just come on in, Pastor. You're fine. The next morning, the shift changed. 
Brother Pollock went in. He was in the office waiting for me because we were going to go do the uh, shark program together. And uh, when all of it took me 15 minutes to get in because they had to keep going through procedure, going through procedure. Even people that knew me, they were still going, why are you doing this? And why not thinking, last night, everything was amazing. You got another shift on it. Now, I told my son, I'm expecting y'all doing strip search in a minute. And, and, and so, uh, Brother Pollock said they did about the same thing to him. We had to go talk to him afterwards to the lieutenant to see what was going on and find out they've been having some problems around there. And so, the new guys didn't want to mess up. But, but again, you got all this stuff going on. And by the time all this happened, 15 minutes, I was already 15 minutes late doing the shark program. By the time it got done, I have to admit, I was a little perturbed. Just a little bit. But I was so perturbed. And I walked in, Brother Bob said, what's going on, bro? And I said, it took me 15 minutes to get in the gate. Normally it takes me about 30 seconds. 15 minutes. And he said, yeah, they did the same thing to me. <laughs> he said, it done worse to you. And <clears throat> he said, it took me five minutes. It took you 15. And, and the Lord spoke to me. He checked me. He said, you get ready to go past all these guards. And you get ready to go in B5 and talk to these heroin addicts. And you're going to walk in with a bad attitude. He said, don't you know the enemy did this? He set this up just so you would have this bad attitude this morning. You know what I did? I stopped right there. I said, hold it, Lord, I, I don't need the bad attitude. God, I know. I just got to believe they're doing their job. Everything's fine. And, 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 and so I just told Brother Pock, I said, no, we're going to have a good time today. And then we go into B5, and they already had a fight. And so they were having a hard time. So I was thinking, if I had come here with a bad attitude, we'd have had a bad day. All right? So, so again... Never, even though life can stretch you out and stress you out, and, and, and there's times we feel like God is just distant and cold. Sometimes you just have to sacrifice a praise. You sacrifice something that you don't feel like doing. You might be struggling. You're weary. You know, you feel like sometimes even God, now this is going to be a hard one. I imagine there's going to be more hands, less hands up, but in their heart to be a lot more up. Have you ever felt like God let you down? Don't put your hand up. There ain't nobody can look at you. Yeah, but he did. He was working, but you didn't see how he was working. So all this is happening. It's easy to get your eyes fixed on what's happening instead of on God. So I got this picture here. This guy plugging into the power from above. Amen. Plug into the power of praise. So let me just talk about praise for just a minute. There's no telling how many weeks we're going to go into this, but we're going to be talking about praise for a little while. And I want y'all to, to act like you're happy. <laughs> Look, you said, I was like, what got to one day said, I am happy. <laughs> and, and I said, well, how about let your face notify your face? Because you don't look like it. Amen. And of course, Andy had to tell one the other day, where it were. He said the short guy ran into the back of him and he walked around to Eddie and he said, the little short guy said, I'm not happy. And Eddie said, which one are you? <laughs> are the dwarfs? Okay. Eddie, you need your new book too. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Praise is powerful. Here's why Satan wants you to have a bad attitude. Here's why Satan wants to get the best of you and just like, just like, Friday morning, I mean Friday morning, we were going there, going in with heroin addicts, and this is supposed to be uh, some redeeming stuff for them. They've got to get some of this stuff done before they can even get out of jail. And, <coughs> and, 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 and so, I already saw 15 minutes, the night before, it didn't take any time to get in. The doors were open everywhere. This time, I mean, I, honestly, they wouldn't even give me a key to the chaplain's office. I couldn't even believe how bad things were Friday morning. But here's the reason why. Satan wants you to have a bad attitude. Now, now, if, you're, now if you're here with somebody that has a bad attitude sometimes, look at him and say, no, this is good. <laughs> Don't do that. Somebody give me a total whipping. Do not do that. Okay. Matter of fact, here's what I say. David, sometimes you have a bad attitude. You better let God take care of it. Now y'all say that. No, take your finger and do this way. Sometimes I have a bad attitude. I need God to help me. Overcoming. Ready? Here we go. Praise is powerful.
Whenever you start to praise in any situation, it never leaves the situation the same. It always does some type of change. Number two, praise is positive. It's hard to praise and pout at the same time. Amen? Try it. Try, try pouting and praising. It's not going to work. You either have to do one or the other. Sweet water and sour water can't come out of the same well. If you find yourself in a bad attitude, start praising God. Start singing to Him. Start praising Him because it's amazing. Matter of fact, what God did, how God took it, took it Friday morning, was a lady who worked up front uh, in, the, in front of the jail, a jail coordinator, she come back and she was in the office talking to Brother Father. And all day she was just agreeing and she was praising God and she was thanking God for so much stuff. And so God helped me to get that back in here. Listen, you cannot praise God and power at the same time. Say that. You can't praise and power at the same time. All right. Number three. Your praise predicts your outcome more than anything. Your praise. I have found myself so many times I, had to, I could not figure my way out. I could not use my brain to get out of it. I didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know how to. I was back in the corner. And when I found out I couldn't pray my way out, I couldn't work my way out, I could praise my way out. Amen? So, so, so here we go. And also, finally, it's productive. Why is it productive? Praise can do what nothing else can do. That's why God wants us to praise Him. That's why the psalmist wrote those psalms, the power of praise. That's why David became king, because David, God, God said, he's going to serve me. He's going to have a heart after me. And the heart for me and after me has to do with his continual praise on his lips. Amen? So, so here we go. Get ready. Just a few things, and then we're going to... And then we're going to call it quits for today. And, and we can actually, if, if McDonald's is still open because it's Labor Day, you can get there before the Baptist. Ready? Ready? Praise. When we plug into praise, we plug into focus. Have you ever had your life get out of focus? Friday morning, I got to admit that my life was out of focus just for a few minutes. It was like for the first 15, 20 minutes that I got in the attention center, my life was out of focus. I was really upset because here I am, an arm full of books, trying to get back there to be five, and, 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 and I couldn't get in. And, and when I finally got in, then it, I mean, I, like I said, I thought they were going to strip search me. I didn't know what in the world was going on. I had a badge. I had a badge. And still. So, so, so I lost my focus Friday morning. I'll be honest with you. Watch this. When you plug into praise, you plug into focus. We get our focus off ourselves and back on God. Now, now, don't be offended, but let me just show you something here. We live in a selfie focused world. I can go along with my grandchildren, and while we're doing something, all of a sudden they stop. They can be having a bad day. They go, oh, no, I don't like this. I can't stand it. Blah, blah, blah. And then their servant has to go, oh, and they get their phone and they go, Then they go like, oh, I can't stand it. They go, what are you doing? Then they go, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I just got to go on my Instagram. Really? You're sitting here having a hard time, but you're going to make everybody else think you're out here having a wonderful time. Really? And I've been with people, well, I'll be, be in Walmart somewhere, or be somewhere, and I'll see people going around like they can barely, look, they walk around like they can barely make it, and they get in front of something and they go, and you see them sitting in the dock going, no wonder people get aggravated, because they say, how come everybody else has a good time except me? They're not necessarily having a good time. Amen? And look, in this selfie focused world, we need to remember something. Life is not all about us. Life is not about what I get. Life is about what I give. Amen? Life is not about what I reap. Life is about what I sow. So, watch this now. When we get our eyes on self, the pain is multiplied. When we get our eyes on self, hurt is magnified. When we get our eyes on God, hope is magnified. So, think about this real quick and we're going to go to something else. He's worthy. No matter what we face from day to day, He is worthy. Amen. Y'all say it. No matter what we face from day to day, say it. No matter what we face from day to day, He is worthy. Amen. Praise
praise him for his mighty works, praise him according to his excellent greatness, Psalm 150 and 2. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long, Psalm 35 and 28. God's got this. Amen? Number one, when we plug in to praise, we plug in to focus. We get things back in order. Things, you start seeing things in a whole different light. Amen? Number two, when we plug in to praise, not only plug in to focus, we plug in to faith. Think about it. You see, see when, when, when I begin to praise God, now all of a sudden it brings me to a place of humility. Now I know in order for me to please God, I'm going to have to remember I'm dependent on Him. Now my faith has got to be activated. I've got to praise God. I need to acknowledge my need for Him. And as we praise Him as Creator, and we praise Him as King of the world, something amazing happens. Because that's when we recognize we're not in control. He is. We're not in control. He is. Just the other day, somebody was talking about they were having such a hard time because life had hit them below the belt, and, and, and things had gone so south in their life. And I woke up in the middle of the night. They were talking about the door was closed and God's, God, where's God, what's happening here? And I woke up in the middle of the night and the Lord told me, you tell them that I'm not, this is not a closed door. It is a renewed door. I'm taking what was like a closed door and I'm letting this door be a door of a renewed opportunity. You tell them that I'm still in control and everything's fine. And so when I got up in the morning, I texted that person. And they just, it, it just did something for them because they were went to sleep believing they had a closed door. And once I said this to them, they began to believe, you know what? God has got this and I'm going to trust him. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. I will give you thanks in the congregation. I will praise you among the people. Psalm 35, 18. When we plug into praise, we plug into an unstoppable force. Why should I keep trying to fight it on my own when I can praise God and He can fight for me? You see, when you plug into praise, it makes the enemy flee. It pushes back the darkness that surrounds us. Satan's not going to stick around if we're praising God because he knows where he's going to fight our battles for us. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Y'all getting awful quiet here. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, somebody praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise him. That's right. Jehoshaphat. Look, and he, he saw God miraculously defeat the enemy. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. 2 Chronicles 20, 22. Here, here's my favorite one. When we plug into power, we plug into floods. Now, you say, what the world's floods? Now, I, I had to think about this one. When you plug into praise, it leaves no room for complaining and negativity because praise floods whatever it gets around it floods it. Amen? Once you start praising God, people around you will start praising God. That girl at Friday morning, because she was praising God, I felt it. I saw it. I finally even hugged her neck and said, thank you so much because I was really upset. I have to wait 15 minutes to get in and then there she is. She's grinning. She's smiling. She's having a good time talking, praising God. And you know what? It just, I felt it just, just jump on me. I, was just, I just said, this is so awesome. Thank you, God, because I can't even remember this girl ever being this far back in, in, in attention. She's always up front. But she was in the back that day because God sent her back. Because to be honest with you, I was complaining on the way to the chaplain's office. I know y'all never do that. No. <laughs> so, 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 so I see it's watch. Sometimes, Problems are going to overwhelm you. And when problems overwhelm us, sometimes our prayers actually become complaints. Uh, I might be the only one that ever does this, but has your prayers ever been a complaining session to God? Were you just talking about everything bad you had going on? 
and how he has to do this and has to do that. And pretty soon, the more you get complained, the more the problems just sit in. They become set in stone because you're not talking to God about your problem and him helping you. All you're doing is complaining. And God, when you start complaining, you push God out of the way. He can't even work because how can he work? Because you brought in the atmosphere of negativity. So praise reminds us this. Watch this. What he has already done in our lives, he's going to be able to do it again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13 and 15. And one more, and I'm going to close. Ready? Oh, here's a good one. Let us therefore offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to Him when we don't feel like it. Amen? That's right. So here we go. One more. When I plug in, oh, here it is. I'm going to finish it up. Finish it up that one. So when I plug in, there's no room for it. Plugs into floods. No room for complaining. Here it is. Luke 24. This is so awesome. I love this verse. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he, he was parted from them and carried into heaven. This is the ascension after the resurrection. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually complaining and fussing in the temple. They were continually praising and blessing God. You want to know what they were doing on the day of Pentecost, what they've been doing for 10 days? They had to do some work, of course, because they had to elect a new apostle. But what was going on, they were continually praising and blessing God. Amen. So be it. Now, on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Meaning, they were together physically, they were together emotionally, they were together spiritually, and they were together in all kinds of ways. They had one thing on their mind, we're going to worship and bless God till the promise comes. Matter of fact, some of you on here today, you might see the promise come faster if you can find a way to worship and praise God till the promise gets here. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled, remember flood, it filled all the house where they were sitting. It filled the house so much that they had to go outside. You know, uh, uh, last night I was writing a paper, I'm doing, so, doing sociology again, and as I'm doing sociology, uh, it asked, in one of my questions, it says, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 2, how is that relevant for today? How, as a church that needs to minister to everybody in the community, red and yellow, black and white, how does this even make sense unless you look at Acts chapter 2? In Acts chapter 2, every known country that had Christians were there. Every known country was there, but not only were they there, they spoke different languages. And when they got there, the apostles came out and everybody heard the wonderful news and the blessings of God in their own language. Wow. That's amazing. It's showing God wants us to reach out and if we'll reach out to people, God will give us what we need to reach out to people. He filled all the houses they were sitting and they had to get out and they had to minister. Jeff, Jeff, you start, don't start coming up this way. This is it. When you enter God's presence with praise, He enters your circumstances with power. When you enter God's presence with praise, He enters your circumstances with power. These guys didn't focus on the crucifixion. Their focus was on the resurrection. I find myself sometimes focusing on the pain in the 
problems. And God says, quit focusing on the pain and the problems and focus on the problem solver and the pain reliever. If these guys had just focused on the terror of the cross, they would not have had this happen. And because they focused on the resurrection and what God did through the cross. Wow. It was amazing. Totally amazing. I want everybody to stand.
you for anointing. I thank you for fresh, freshness, Lord. I thank you for fresh hope, for a fresh anointing. I thank you, God. Glory to the Lamb of 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 God. I thank you, God. You got this. We love you. We praise your name. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for all that you're going to do for us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. There's nothing we can do without you, God. We've got to have you, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to each of us. God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Such a beautiful song. God is so awesome to us. This week, whenever you feel your attitude going south, whenever you feel your hope going south, praise Him. Just try to praise Him. <laughs> praise Him. And watch what God can do. Amen? Everybody let's stand. God is so, so awesome. Amen. Brother Dudley, we just miss us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you for the message we 